Coffee Company. Sweet. So, thank you all for being here this morning. I realize that uh, having a group of engineers here before the crack of noon is perhaps not anyone's natural state. So, we very much appreciate all you guys being here, and, uh, and I'm going to run through this pretty quick so we can actually get into the meat of the day. But before we do, I wanted to quickly talk a little bit about what I think about is scale when I'm looking at mobile. Uh, first, a, a question for you guys. So, how many of you have been developing and shipping mobile products for more than five years? Oh, I so don't believe all of you. <laughs> that, that's awesome. How many of you have been doing it for less than one year? All right. So, the reality is, is that you know, while mobile certainly builds on, you know, 40 years of computer science and certainly the two primary platforms build on, you know, 20 years each, whether we look at, you know, Java or sort of the small talk backbone of, of iOS, we're actually a pretty young discipline. When you look at the technology we have available, the reach we have available, and the rate of change we're all dealing with, things are moving very, very quickly. And part of that is just the general adoption curves we're all operating within. So this is number of years to get to 75% adoption of various technologies in the United States market. And what you see, of course, is that newer technologies in general have deployed faster and technologies that have been able to surf out on their predecessors deploy even faster than that. So cell phones took 28 years. We had to build sales infrastructure, put up cell towers, convince us that we actually wanted to be in touch with the world 24-7. Right? Some of you in the room remember a time before that when it seemed weird that we would be doing that all the time. Smartphones went out in half the time. And why is that? Well, they got to just surf out on the same infrastructure that cell phones did. Well, you had software in, right? App stores moved out very, very quickly. And what most of us are doing is trying to ship software out through these. So the period we have to adapt to change, very, very small. So, First, let's just talk about actually building great products and developing at scale. And you're going to hear a lot about this today. But one of the key transitions, right, is that we went from desktop, where we had to put software in boxes, for crying out loud. You know, we had to compete for end cap space. Does anybody actually, anybody in this room have to, you know, deal with trying to get software into an end cap in a store? Right, that, not the most fun. You didn't ship that often. You might have shipped software that you never updated, right? Because it went out in a box and you were done. And then, you know, the web came along, and it, we will kind of pretend that IE5 didn't happen. Other than that, this was actually made things quite a bit simpler. Continuous deployment, continuous release, continuous you know, integration. Wasn't this wonderful? And we built all these habits around that speed and ease. And then mobile came along. In a lot of ways, mobile actually looks like embedded development. Right? You're very close to the hardware. You're worried about threads. You're worried about memory limitations. And we had to relearn a bunch of habits. Um, and of course, deployment got harder again, too, whether we're talking about going out through App Store approval processes or dealing with fragmentation on Android. So a lot of the talks today will, will run through what different organizations did to solve these problems. The second one is, and of course, with, with Facebook, right? we knew this was happening. We had really clear signals that the mobile transition was coming. Uh, the first at scale event was about data. We care about this quite a bit. So we knew it was coming. Facebook has a secondary element, like we have this general transition of computation to mobile. But on top of that, Facebook's just a better product on mobile. Like I have friends who will go to a you know, party, and they'll sit down at the party and they'll pull out the laptop and they'll be posting from the, the, the event, but my friends aren't normal, right? No, normal people have cell phones. And so we had these two tailwinds coming in behind us, both general technological transition and Facebook being a better product on mobile. We're also a culture of experimentation, moving quickly, trying shit, right? There's the big banner, move fast and break things up on the wall, right? So we should have been pretty good at this. And the reality is this was an extremely difficult transition for us. And Jocelyn will be talking a little bit later this morning. It's going to go into a fair amount of detail of what we went through trying to get through this transition. What new techniques we had to build, what technologies we explored, where we were optimizing sort of for our ease versus optimizing for the experience of users. So the second one is how do we build great products? Right, we're lucky enough to have this direct connection 
to hundreds of millions of people, to billions of people, right? And they pull their phone out of their pocket 15, 20, 100 times a day. How do we make those products better? How do we make sure that they're engaging and fun and awesome and all the things that we want to do? As we went through the mobile transition, what we saw is a pretty dramatic increase in daily use. So these are public um, ComScore numbers. But so July 2012 to July 2013, we almost doubled the daily use of Facebook as we improved the product and just in general, more smartphones, more engagement. And you can also see that there is a mild drop in desktop use, right? There is this displacement of usage. But I think the more interesting one is actually overall media trends. So this year is a pretty special year. For the first time, television will not be what most Americans spend the most time on every day. So until last year, basically since the emergence of television as a communication medium, television has been where people spend the most time every day. And this year, it'll be a little over four hours, where digital overall is over five hours. But the curve that everyone in this room is hopefully watching is this little gray one, right? So this is the mobile component of overall digital. And uh, I'm not you know, the best data guy, but the slope of that curve is kind of interesting. And so it's pretty, whoa, ah, I'm so excited about mobile. <laughs> so if we look out a year or two, right, the dominant form of media consumption is going to be on mobile, right? So how do we build the right products for that? How do we expect that everyone who's using our products is going to be looking at them 100 times a day, 200 times a day, for hours? So the third one is growth. So there are 5 billion cell phone subscriptions overall in the world. There are around 2 billion smartphones, around 2 billion internet connections. And so by almost any standard, that's an interesting market size to address, right? I think most folks would be pretty happy to be able to sell, sell products into that market. How do we build products for all of those people? And then at Facebook, what we're, we're concerned about is how do we actually increase the number who have a persistent data connection? Because of course, if you go to the developing world, what you see is very intermittent data connections. You see 2.5G connections. You see morning fill-ups of data. And so how are we going to build products that work well as those billions of people start getting their first smartphones? How do we handle offline well? How do we handle 2.5G well? How do we handle what is the typical Android experience, which is substantially less horsepower than the iPhone 5S that a lot of you are probably carrying right now? And I think we're going to talk about this one a little bit today. As we think about future at scale events, I think this will be a pretty big topic for us. And finally, the reason that we're all here together. We're a young discipline. We all have different experiences as we've started building these products. We have an opportunity to learn from each other in pretty profound ways. We're fortunate today we're going to have speakers from Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, and Dropbox, all of whom build pretty amazing mobile products and have had to really change their mobile products over the last couple of years. And so for the rest of today, first of all, have fun. Right? It's a rare opportunity to actually hear so many great speakers talk about what they're doing. But the challenge for all of you is ask them hard questions. Your goal should be to stump one of the speakers. And I say it because I don't have a Q&A period in my talk, so it's really easy for me to say. <laughs> the other piece that I expect from all of the speakers is they're going to be saying things that reasonable people can disagree with. This is not about mom and apple pie. Like, if all we're going to do is tell you stuff that you already know, this is a waste of the speaker's time and a waste of your time. So you're not going to agree with everything that somebody says, and that's OK. Talk to them about why you disagree. Catch them after their talk out you know, in breaks. Engage. Be active listeners. Think about what you're hearing and how you want to apply that to your particular problems and the challenges that you face. Um, and with that, now that we are back on time exactly, um, it is uh, my great pleasure to uh, bring Karen up to the stage so that he can talk about the experiences of LinkedIn. Uh, Karen is the Senior Director of Mobile at LinkedIn. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And let me give you the clip.